Hello, and welcome back. We're going to continue covering fluid imbalances, looking more specifically at some of our electrolytes. In this case, the first electrolyte we're going to look at is going to be sodium. All right. Sodium is abbreviated NA. And we're going to start with what happens when you've got too much sodium. So that's going to be hypernatremia. The way I like to remember these, all right, because sometimes when you get to the electrolytes, you've got hyper, hyper, hyper or hypo. And the other end of the word can help you remember which electrolyte we're talking about. Because there's an NA in the middle of here, and NA is our abbreviation for sodium, that's how I remember that hypernatremia is a sodium imbalance. So basically what we're talking about for mechanism of this happening, you've either got more salt than you have water, or you've got loss of more water than you do salt, okay? What ends up happening in the extracellular component, because this is gonna be extracellular here, Oop, that's an A. This is going to be intracellular. Remember, these are our two major compartments for where fluids move between. Right? With hypernatremia, we've got way more sodium inside, or sorry, outside of the cell than we do inside. Okay? And I'm using the arrows here because there's normally going to be sodium outside of the cells. This is part of the normal process. Normally, sodium is a little higher. That helps re uh, retain the electrical current across the membrane. What we're talking about here is excess, OK? So we've got excess sodium in the extracellular space. And what that's going to do, because water likes to follow sodium. Our water is going to move outside of our cell. Okay? So that clinically ends up resulting in some dehydration because you've got loss of water from the cell. The body is trying to stay in homeostasis to remain to maintain the correct sodium balance. Okay, so that's what's happening as far as our mechanism. As far as our etiology, all right, what can cause this imbalance to happen? Certain medications can do this. I'm not going to go into lists. I just want you to know that medications can do this. This clinically is going to be important because if you have a patient who is on a medication that might cause hypernatremia, you want to make sure that they stay hydrated. They get plenty of water. Um, also, osmotic um, diuretic. Primarily what we're talking about here is going to be feeding tubes. If the individual is on a feeding tube, there are going to be electrolytes, other nutrients in there. If the patient isn't given enough water, that can cause hypernatremia from the feeding tube. Okay. Um, another one is diabetes insipidus. This is uh, more familiarly referred to as water diabetes, all right? This is a result of low levels of that antidiuretic hormone. Remember, antidiuretic hormone is responsible for pulling water back out of the nephron, all right? Um, so individuals with diabetes insipidus could be prone to hypernatremia if they're not intaking enough fluids. All right, and then any excessive water loss. And we covered those in the previous video. So things like diarrhea, vomiting, um, massive blood loss or hemorrhaging can result in this. All right, so those are some of the causes associated with hypernatremia. All right, 
So what ends up happening? What are some of the manifestations? Okay, I guess I'll put it up here. All right, and I'm gonna abbreviate that. Clinical manifestations, all right? You can have thirst, low urine output, okay? Um, confusion. And the individual tends to be tired, okay? So these, as far as clinical manifestations, are more on the mild side, okay? And because this is where my board space is, um, I'm gonna put severe clinical manifestations over here, all right? So because of the water moving across the membrane and the imbalances in sodium, that can disrupt membrane potential so that can lead to, um, in more severe cases, things like seizures, coma, and the thing you don't want to have happen to your patient, death, okay? So not having correct fluid balance within the body can be very detrimental, all right? Mechanism. Water's moving from the intracellular to the extracellular space because sodium is higher in the extracellular space. There are a number of reasons this can occur, and the manifestations are primarily going to be related to things associated with dehydration. Okay? If you have questions, please let us know.